thank you everyone for coming. Um, it's a beautiful day for a very long awaited joyous occasion and uh, we're very pleased that friends, neighbors, staff, students, um, anyone that was involved um, or touched the James Monroe community and had an opportunity to come today to the uh, groundbreaking ceremony. We're going to start with um, Student Council President Marina Murad uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so if you would stand. And I just want to recognize that the flag is at half staff today because it is in remembrance of law, enforce, law enforcement officers that were killed for Memorial Day. Um, so now, Marina, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Great job. You can be seated. We, the flag that you were just pledging is the original flag from the night that we lost the school, so we wanted to hang it back up in uh, this groundbreaking ceremony as the beginning of the new James Monroe School. So today is just another important step in our journey um, to bring our students and staff here back to Seven Sharp Road. Although it's been a little over a year, I've learned some important lessons through all this. And probably one of the most important ones was hard times will always reveal your true friends. And today, I just want to acknowledge those true friends of the James Monroe School that have been with us um, through this at least long year of journey and will continue to be with us as we rebuild this school. Um, someone with, that was with us on that night, uh, our prosecutor, Andrew Carey, our mayor, Tom Lanky. Uh, mayor McCormick is working his way. He is the mayor of Woodbridge, but he was instrumental in helping us get our residents that is in uh, Island right now, that our students are, are attending. Um, Laura Morena is the county superintendent. She is working her way up the uh, driveway now. She uh, has been instrumental in helping us get a lot of our approvals through the state. Uh, the commissioner of education, Dave Hespe, uh, also, uh, he is not here, but he wishes he could have been here today. He was also instrumental on that morning of trying to make sure that we got our students someplace to go to school um, that week, and he's been with us all along. Um, Joanna LaPerla Morales is the president of the Middlesex County College, who joining us as well, who uh, was very helpful in getting our students a home for that short period of time. Uh, Assemblyman Degnan is with us. We thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us as well. Um, Town Council members, Mr. Lombardi, Karabinchak, thank you for joining us. Thank you from the town's perspective, um, even up to this week, helping us get things uh, done and helping us rebuild the school. I, I appreciate the relationship that we have with the, the town as well. Um, our board members, uh, Mr. She, Ms. Ains, Ms. Maroney, Ms. Bonderowitz, Ms. Harris um, are also with us. Ms. Iyer, our board president, will say a few words as well. I think I have everyone there. Um, our president of the uh, teachers union, Jeff Bowden, is in the back. Uh, thank you for being here. Ken Carl is from Land Architects over there. He's the one who designed this beautiful building. And then um, Daniel Maldenovic, who is Dobco, and he is the president of the company that will be building this beautiful school here on Seven Sharp Road. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for all you have done as well. Um, some of our administrators that are joining us, Ms. Beams, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Conklin, Mr. Patuco, uh, and Mr. Stroms on our head of grounds. Um, and then staff and students, we felt it was also very important to have um, those people that are affected probably the most uh, to join us today at this very joyous occasion. So we were able to make some uh, uh, accommodations to have our staff. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming and our students as well. And you'll hear from some of our students as, as we move along. So I just want to say one more time that thank you for joining us. Um, without all of you, um, not only would this day be happened, but all the events prior to leading up to this day would not have been happened. It's been a real team effort. Um, and I think it's been 
well publicized how much everyone has contributed, not only uh, within Edison, but outside across this country. And we really wouldn't have done it without everyone's special accomplishments. And I would just kind of say at the end, although that night of March 22nd was a pretty tragic night, um, we continue to be grateful that no one was hurt. And I think that's the blessing that comes out of all of this. Um, but two nights later was a, a pretty hard night as well. Uh, it was pretty hard for me as I stood before about a thousand people and had to reassure them that everything would be okay. And I think the most important thing that I said on that night was that we will, and I said we, we will build James Monroe School. And today marks the accomplishment of building James Monroe School. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> So now what I'd like to do is call uh, Ms. Iyer to the uh, podium, the Board of Education President, to say a few remarks. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on this beautiful day. It marks a great day to start the rebuilding of the James Monroe School. Um, welcome to Mayor Lanky, our town council members, board members, uh, teachers, staff, students, and most especially members of the community that are out here today. In March 2014, we lost James Monroe Elementary School, but here we are, just over a year later, breaking ground for the new building. We could not have gotten to this point so quickly without the help and support of so many. Middlesex County College gave us a home immediately. The D Diocese of Metuchen, with the assistance of Woodbridge Mayor McCormick, who's not here yet, um, found the St. Cecilia Building, which will continue to house our students through the next school year. The um, support of our municipal government, our teachers union was invaluable. The outpouring of support from across the country gave our students much needed supplies. Dr. O'Malley, along with his administrative staff, Mrs. Zapatisney and her teachers and staff made sure that our students always felt that the school community was safe, well cared for, and most importantly, stayed together. By September 2016, James Monroe will once again be a neighborhood school. On behalf of the Edison Township Board of Education, thank you for coming to today's groundbreaking. We may have to change our mascot if that's uh, going to happen. Um, now it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the principal of the James Monroe School, Ms. Linda Zavitisny. When Dr. O'Malley first called me about today's ceremony, he gave me one directive, no tears. <laughs> At the time, in my mind, since this was a joyous occasion, I thought, no problem. However, the emotional energy here so surrounds us, it's almost palpable. So I'm sorry, but all bets are off. <laughs> the last time all of us gathered together was at Edison High School an emotionally charged event of a very different kind. That night, Dr. Ma O'Malley stood before the standing room only crowd and vowed that James Monroe's school would be rebuilt. Through his tenacity and with full support of the Board of Education members led by Mrs. Iyer and Dr. Heelan, his promise today starts the next chapter of our journey. Since March 22nd, the recurring themes for all of us at James Monroe have been gratitude and the importance of community. Each of these has played out in so many ways, rendering quantifying them impossible. First and foremost, I know without a doubt that we would be in a very different place had we been split up. As difficult as it has been at times, the children and staff were together. So our community remained unscathed, leaving us forever grateful to everyone who played a role in that decision, especially Dr. O'Malley and the central office administrators, board members, and Dr. Joanne LaPerla Morales, president of Middlesex County College and her outstanding staff. Community manifested itself as well in the form of all of my colleagues who reached out and offered support in every way that they could, including fundraisers and donations from every other school in this district. 
Special thanks to Edison High School Principal Charles Ross for hosting that first meeting, as well as providing his school for our Harvest Eve. To Cindy Tafaro, Principal of Lindenau School, in more ways than I can ever count, who not only was by my side from the very beginning, but with the help of Donna Abeta Marco and the CRTs, involved the children of every other elementary in creating flowers and banners so that the buildings at MCC were decorated to greet the James Monroe children when they entered their new spaces, creating a wonderland that none of us will ever forget. An integral part of our community is represented by the parents of our students who have handled the tumult and transitions of this past year with patience and understanding. From the very beginning, they put their faith in the hands of Principal Brian McGrath and the Herbert Hoover staff by dropping their children off to be driven by bus to the college. This year, they once again leave their loved ones at stops where district-owned buses, driven by a terrific tra transportation staff, bring them to and from our present location. To the Edison community at large, we were able to see the, who were able to see the greater good in rebuilding this school and voted yes on the referendum from all of us at James Monroe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe the resounding cheers at 45 Willis Way the morning after the election could be heard where we are standing today. The children of James Monroe are my heart. Their response to events thus far have been incredible. The highlight of my day is arrival and dismissal when I get to greet each and every one of the 13 busloads of children. No matter what the rest of the day is like, they manage to lift my spirits and remind me of why we are all here. The unsung heroes in this story are, of course, the staff members of James Monroe. I will not single out any because each and every one of them has played a pivotal part in weaving a cohesive tapestry that is our school. With me today are grade level teachers and key personnel members representing the entire staff. I'm going to ask all of you to please join me in acknowledging these wonderful, wonderful people whose effort knows no bounds. I also have with me a student from each fourth and fifth grade homeroom, as well as a contingent of third grade students. The latter group will be members of the class of 2017, the first ever fifth grade to leave this brand new building. They are here either because they are exemplary members of our student council who have spearheaded a fantastic community service effort in supporting the St. Cecilia's Food Bank as well as other worthwhile endeavors or because they wrote an essay for me about the new school and you will soon hear three of them. This brings me back to the meeting at Edison High School. That night I stated that what we lost was a building full of things but we, the staff, the parents, and especially the children, are James Monroe. No matter where our journey takes us in the next few years, so goes our school community. Shortly thereafter, our music teacher, John Peccarelli, composed a song paraphrasing my speech that has now become our mantra. We are James Monroe. We are a family and work together when challenges come our way. We are James Monroe. We're more than a building, and we're building our future day by day. We are the school. That is the truth. And we take it with us wherever we go. Each and every day, nothing can take that away. We are the school. Yes, we are James Monroe. Well, I meant what I said, and I still do believe the words I spoke that evening. And although Mayor McCormick of Woodbridge and the Diocese of Metuchen have made us feel very welcome, the reality is this. We miss being part of this neighborhood community. 
So there is a hole in our hearts. Standing here today at Seven Sharp Road makes true the adage, there really is no place like home. Thank you. Now we have three students who were selected out of all of the third graders who each touched a little bit differently on what the new building will mean to them. So I'm going to introduce them one at a time and they are going to loudly and proudly read their speeches. First up, we'll go alphabetically, Kyle Alviar. After all the things everyone has been through and all the schools we have been in, we are going back to our home in 2016. I am so excited to be able to return to James Monroe because I have many happy memories of the time before the fire, and I am hoping to create many more. I am excited what our brand new school will have in store for us. I am eager to see if the rooms are larger, if there is a rainbow hallway, hopefully air conditioning, and much more. I can't believe we're going to be fifth graders when we return to our home. I'm so excited to go to James Monroe because we have, we have been in a lot of schools and we have been through a lot. Chapter 2 of our whole new world began at Middlesex County College and now we are here at St. Cecilia's completing Chapter 3. In MCC and our present school, we have been learning constantly. In Chapter 5 of our journey, we will be back home in our new school building. I know when we return to our community, the James Monroe sign will be in the, in the same place it was before the fire. It has been through a lot, just like us. It has traveled with us from a college campus to an old school, and finally it will be back at its rightful place. When we get there, we will make a lot of new memories. We will be back at Seven Sharp Road soon, and we'll still be learning day by day in our brand new home, James Monroe. Next up, we have Mio Howard. When our school burned down, I was heartbroken. After that, we settled in St. Cecilia School, but it did not feel like home as much as Seven Star Pro did. I am pleased that now the school is being rebuilt and so is our family. When our school is open, I'll have one wonderful school year there. I also will not be on the bus getting squeezed by other kids, and I won't have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and leave at 8, 10 a.m. Another reason I am very excited and thrilled is James Monroe School holds many great memories, like meeting my first Japanese friend there. The best memory is I got my courage to be myself in first grade from a girl named Teresa Lee, who is now my best friend. In 2016, we will have a chance to create more memories with our classmates. When I am in fifth grade, I hope that I will be able to help someone else gain this the same kind of confidence like it did as a student there. Even though I like St. Cecilia School, Seven Sharp Road holds the greatest memories. Although I know they can never be replaced by anything, I'm sure the best is still to come. Good job. Good job. And last but certainly not least, least Shiva Valmorunga. I am so happy to know that our new school is being built and expected to be completed in the next year. Since we will be the first people to graduate from James Monroe, I will be honored to be attending this beautiful school. My class and I are eager to continue our education there. I am expecting that the new two-story facility features many classrooms, computer labs, a big library, gym room, all-purpose room, Spanish room, supply storage room, kitchen, art and music room. I think there will be a big hallway with many water fountains on the side. We would like to have many windows with, uh, and, a new, and new grand staircases. There should be a large playground with equipment. 
Each class will have wireless network, allowing students and teachers to bring in laptops to access information for projects and assignments. The new building will be fully air-conditioned for all seasons. It will also have an advanced security system, and the main entrance will be decorated beautifully. My classroom may have new comfortable chairs, desks, and a huge creative carpet. We can have a new Promethean board, easels, and supplies to learn things in a fun way. We will have broad cubbies and closets to store our backpacks, lunch boxes, and jackets. It is nice to have books of different genres to improve our reading and writing skills. Our teacher will also have a large desk to keep our work, homework, and notes. There will be many windows for good air circulation, bright lights, learning charts, and colorful walls. It will be a great classroom. I have been anticipating seeing our new school for so long and I'm feeling really happy that it will soon be completely built. I can't wait for the day the new Jane Monroe School will be open. So I can't wait for the new Menlo Park Mall to open that he just described. Uh, it looks like we have to design a kind of thing a little bit different. But thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining us here today. Um, this is going to be the next part is to take some photos and to uh, have an opportunity to share some stories, talk to some students and staff. We have some refreshments behind the sign. Um, and then just one last thank you to Mrs. Abitizny, the staff, all, all the students who came today, to, we're really grateful that you were able to be part of this. Um, Assemblyman Dagan, the county prosecutor, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days. Um, and then mayor and council, as well as the board members, thank you for all your support as if we tried to, uh, over the last year, um, get this school rebuilt. And uh, starting next week, we should have some big bulldozers in the ground and ready to build that wonderful school that was just described to you in, in some variation or form. But thank you so much, everyone. And uh, some of the dignitaries, please come on up so we can take some pictures. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.